Hello everybody, this is Dreaming of a Back for oh, Round 1 for Group I of my tournament. And yes, we are finally concluding Group... Well, Round 1, I should say. And yes, finally, all of you lovely people in Group I who've been waiting ever so patiently are going to finally have your time in the spotlight. So yes, in, in these matchups, we will see Xelos series go up against Dark Ash Star. An intriguing matchup, that is. I'm looking forward to that one. Marissa Kurosame taking on Cryo Nova, and then Asterion going up against Morslet. Ooh, let's get let's let's get started. Let's let's, let's let's get started. Group I definitely an open group. Alrighty then, in the red corner for Zelos we have a Sabatosaurus, and yes, it's the only person in this whole tournament that's using Goma, which I I'm hugely surprised about. And do they have a Neokak area in their team? No. But yes, this Ceratosaurus is not to be trifled with. Although, I, I never understood why the Dinosaur King Cerato is like a little ratty thing. And yet, in any other game, is made out to be like a decent sized carnivore. <laughs> but anyway, there we are. In the blue corner for Darky Ash Star, we have a Metriacanthosaurus. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this mech does. Because it kind of has the same combo that my Kama has with the, with the uh, tie move and then the softening beam. And it has technique boost as well, so... I'm really looking forward to seeing how this metric Amphosaurus will fit. And, yeah, I was considering, like, a heat eruption softening beam combo, but I would have used Simo Tyrannus because it's charge type. But, yeah, there we go. Ooh, it's a softening beam right off the bat. That's a good start from Dark Ash Star. I'm, I'm not really sure he's going to win this matchup, because... Dark Ashtar has the type advantage here, but then Zalos' third dino, which is Black T-Rex, will have the type advantage over Darky Ashtar's Eutoraptor. Here's the technique boost, increasing the likelihood of that heat eruption being activated. Ooh, but so far it doesn't need it. It's scaring off another softening beam. I wonder if these stack. I don't think the softening beam stacks. I'll be intrigued to see if it does. But yes, a good start from Dark Ash Star. Zalos actually has a really good record during the group stage of my tournament. I think has a good record overall in the group stage. Oh, the Are we serious? Another softening beam? Come on, get on, random number generate. They'll give us something good. Sick of softening beam. Let's have a tie. I want a tie, I do. Oh, well, it doesn't matter now, because the Serato is going to die anyway. Well, better yet, let Zalos... If this is a pa if this is paper, this is ripped. Tell you what, I don't usually do this, but I'm refreshing. That is ridiculous. Four papers in a row. All right then. As for Zalos's second eye note, we have a Tajongosaurus, the king of the crits. And this beast does have Rock Roller, and it is lethal type, so... An easy way for Zalos to get back in this match. The Metriacanthosaurus hasn't even taken a hit. Dude. But, well, I think the thing for Zalos, he needs to go scissors to stop the softening beams. Oh, finally, finally, he's gone paper. Ooh, a Metriacanthosaurus gets the hit. This has been a dominant display so far from Dark Ash Star. Ooh, finally a tie. No heat eruption now. Wow, even even with this high technique boost, still no heat eruption. Like Metric Amphosaurus right now is at 1400 technique. Well, there's another softening beam. Here it comes! It's a heat eruption! This is why heat eruption's in the move set. Dark Ash Stars racing into a 2-0 lead. But do not count Zalos out yet, because his third dino is the Black T-Rex. And that beast is capable of sweeping the whole team. Speak of the devil, there's the Black T-Rex. They lost the only one to use Black T-Rex in this whole tournament, which I'm kind of surprised about. Maybe I should, maybe I could loosen the conditions or such, I don't know. 
but yes, this black T-Rex is not to be trifled with, even if it does have a paltry 170 technique. Go on, Zaynos, get a hit! Can Zaynos even get a hit? Okay, that's one. This will probably be... Hey, he got a hit! And it's an ACT rocket. Zaylos finally getting a hit. Now, if you sh if you want to be fair about this random number generator, you should give Zaylos about five crits in a row because you gave Dark Ash Star five papers in a row, so Zaylos should get five papers in a row. Well, there's one crit. The Metriacanthosaurus finally taking a hit. Will this rocket kill it? Nope. But it will pretty much stop heat eruption from being activated. But the Metricamphosaurus does get off a hit. Oh, oh, here we go again. Dash Star getting the hits again. A Death Fire would be really key right now for Xenos. Well, the Metricamphosaurus is finally going down. But let's be honest, it did amazing, didn't it? Not because it got off heat eruption, but it just spammed softening beams. Alright, well, I didn't think we'd get this far, but as for Dark Ashtar's second dino, we have an Armatus. The Spectral Armor version, of course. Rightly pointed out by Foolscout there. And Armatus will probably get the win for Dark Ashtar. I think Xenos has got off two hits in this whole match. That really not happened, that quite happened for it. Okay, oop, oop, that's a paper. Yep, there's another hit. And I think that will be Black T-Rex dead, or it's going to be on really low health. In which case, it could get off a death fire. Oh, it's going to, it's got a death fire, it's got a chance. Come on, Zaylos. I want Zaylos to get his death fire off. Come on, Zaylos. Yes, he got it off. You know, he deserves this. Zaylos has had horrible luck in this matchup. He's got off that death fire. And because it's his last dino, there will not be a tie. So random, no, the moves will be generated randomly. Look at that. You know what, Zaylos, you're probably going to lose this match. But you put up a fight. You got off a death fire. Look at this. I mean, it doesn't matter that the Black T-Rex has the type advantage because it can't get off death. It can't get the um, burning dash triggered because it's got such low health. But come on, come on, Zaylos. You know, God give Zaylos some props here. Free hit, and he's got Dark Astar down to his third dino. That is clinical. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you know, what? I we gotta give Zaylos some props here. He got off three hits and got. Dark Ashtar down to his third dino. Yes, one of those hits was Deathfire, but come on, that was epic. Dark Ashtar got about almost four times as many hits. But yes, a good win for Dark Ashtar there, but Zaylos did show some defiance and denied him the bonus point. So yeah, let's move on to round two, where it hopefully won't be that one-sided, where we will see Marissa Kurosame going up against Cryonova. Alrighty then, in the red corner for Cryonova, we have a Neo Venator. Keeps bragging about the power of this beast, and I did rate it highly during my tier list, so, you know, it's not senseless bragging. But yes, Cryonova, one of the naughty toddlers who clearly didn't watch my announcement video, even though I made it pretty clear that he needed to. And do you want to know why I know that? Because after I went through everyone's teams, that is when he realised that I allowed the use of character cards, which I made specifically clear in the announcement video. And that is how I know that he did not watch it. And that's why he's a naughty toddler. But anyway, as for Marissa in the blue corner, we have the Fukui Raptor. Quite an even matchup, these two. I feel like Neo Veneto will edge it, though. Ooh, it's a tie. Ties probably favour the Fukui Raptor a little bit there. Neo Veneto looked like it took more damage. Yeah, definitely. This Fukui Raptor is tie type. Ooh, getting off that opening crit. I feel like this is a good chance for Marissa to get a win here because they do have a tight matchup. 
They do have a good matchup against Chrono. And you know, Crown Over does have mixed fortunes in my tournaments. Good hit there. The Dino Illusion getting triggered. Ooh, there's the Cyclone though. Probably going to need that Cyclone just to get rid of the Dino Illusion. Ooh, the Fukui wrapped again off a hit though. This is a good start from Marissa. There's the di Dino Illusion. And there's a Cyclone from the Fukui Raptor. Wow, look at this. This is the definition of an even match. Both got Dino Illusion. Oh, it's a tie. There's the Cyclone, though. And, well, that was very quick. But, okay, there's the Dino Illusion. The Cyclone allowed the Fukui Raptor to get the hit there, but the Dino Illusion said no. Oh, that's a tie. Oh, Fukui Raptor gets the hit. Marissa takes a 1-0 lead. But the saving grace for Cryo is that the second Dino is the Karkiridontosaurus. So it will have the type advantage over that Fukui Raptor. And it is lethal type, so that fire cannon will be lethal. <laughs> Come on then! But they gotta get rid of this pesky dino illusion first. Oh, it's a V-Flight! Well, this is one hell of a performance from Marissa so far. Cryon over getting swarmed. Boosh, 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 boosh. Although the Kaka will not take too much damage. Oh, never mind, it did take a bit of damage. Hey, the Kaka finally gets a hit. The dino illusion finally gone. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that's a tie. Ties fame of the Fukui Raptor now. Ooh. Oh, another tie. <laughs> Look at this. Fukui Raptor looks like. Oh, it's not going to be a 2-0 lead for Marissa. Instead, the Cryonova is going to get off a crucial hit to finish off the Fukui Raptor and even the score. But Marissa still has a sizable lead. All right, as for this second dino, we have a Super Kamarasaurus. The Awaken Mode on 2, I believe. Get my notes out real quick. Du -du 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 -du. Marissa, Marissa, Marissa. Yep, the Awaken Mode on 2. This camera is quite the powerhouse. Although, and it does have the type advantage over the Kakirodontosaurus, so I suspect that Marissa will have a 2-1 lead in about 2 minutes. Oh, there's a tie. No Ocean Panic for Kraut to worry about, though. Ooh, I tell you what, though. It's a Fire Cannon! And this will do some damage. Even with our type disadvantage, the Kakirodontosaurus striking back. Oh, oh, there's the glitch again from using Fire Wow, that's quite impressive, actually. Oh, a volcano burst would have been epic there, but it didn't happen. Oh, that's a tie. Kaka hanging on by a thread, but Cryonova clawing back in this match. And yep, that should be the Kakarodontosaurus dead, but the Kamarasaurus did take quite a beating. More of a beating than I expected. Skip. Alright, yeah, that's for Cranover's third dino, the MVP of the team here, we have Paris Dino Tector. And Cranover might need that Dino Tector if he wants to win this match, because Marissa has definitely put up a good fight, and has, well, has been in the lead for most of it. Pretty much all of it, to be honest. Can the camera survive to get to awaken mode? The answer to that is yes, it is going to survive. It's got the Hydro Cut there, it's got the, it has the Futaba Cannon. Can Marissa get that hit? Oh, it does! I think that is going to be Para Para biting the big one. And it's going to be a bonus point win for Marissa. Yep. There goes the para para, and it's a 
bonus point win for Marissa over Crown Nova. Well, I kind of saw it coming, to be honest. They, they did have a favourable matchup. But yeah, quite an impressive win there for for that for the debutant. As for Crown Nova, well, better luck next time. Right then, on to our final match of this video, and on to our final match of round one. We've seen all the other combatants, but we have yet to see Asterion taking on Morslet. Right, Depo, then, in the red corner for Asterion, we have a Decreosaurus. Asterion been waiting patiently for their time in the spotlight, and here it is. This is the attacking type of Decreosaurus. I, was like, I was gonna consider using, to be honest. It's a pretty solid dinosaur. Look at our solid stats there. And it will have the type advantage over this Yangchungosaurus. Yangchungosaurus in the blue corner for Moors here. Moors also wait impatiently for their time in the spotlight. <laughs> uh, it, it is what it is. You know, I, I have to wait a, I have to wait like eight almost two weeks till I play again. Well, not really, because I, I just record well, my recording schedule is a bit all over the place, but. Yeah, I'm trying to record as many tournament matches as I can before Jurassic World Evolution 2 comes out. Because I'll be play I'll be focusing all my time on that. And the Primal Carnage update's coming out this week. And again, I'll pretty much be focusing on that. Because it's quite a big one. But anyway, back to the back to the tournament. Yang Chungasaurus getting an opening crit there. Decent damage dealt. Good start from Moors. Ooh, here comes uh, what the bloody hell is this? Fire cannon! This won't do too much damage to the uh, the Creosaurus, but you know, at least it's a hit. Ooh, this will do some damage to the Antonosaurus though. The Creosaurus getting off their first hit. There is the shockwave. Good hit there by what's this guy? Astarion. Okay, I'm just gonna say Aster. Okay, our skizzers. No, you can't go wrong. Yeah, that's right, you gotta go skizzers. There's the move breaker there, nullifying the scissors move. Ooh, but the Yangchungosaurus gets off the scissors hit. The Kreosaurus, despite having the type advantage, cannot get a hit on this Yangchungosaurus. And yes, despite having the type disadvantage, Morse is gonna emerge with a 1 0 lead. The Creosaurus kind of underwhelming me. Alright then, as for Asta's second dino, we have a Tajonosaurus. Already seen this guy in this video, the King of the Crets, although this one's not Lethal type, I believe it's Revival type. But it will still pack a pow powerful Cret, because Tajonosaurus is a powerful dinosaur. But can this Tijongosaurus get Asta back in the match? That's a tie. Ties, I, I think this Yang is charged. It might be defense type, actually. Well, whatever it is, Ties do favor it at this point because Moors does have the lead. And Moors is going to be extending that lead. In comes the fire cap. Flash and dead. Look at this from Morse, a Yang Chungosaurus cleaning house. Another tie. Oh, and another, another fire cannon. And it's going to be a 2 0 lead for Morse. Looking really, really good. Aston not in the best of shapes. But here comes the MVP for Team Aster, though the Super Anki Ceratops. Can this Anchiceratops get Asta back in this match? Well, one more hit should kill the Yangchungosaurus, so the Yangchungosaurus will be dead in one hit. But it's about getting that hit. Oh, that's a tie. Again, ties do favour the Yang Trungosaurus because it does have a lead and it's going to be extending it with an Alpha Dart. 
Here he comes. What's he going to land on? Okay, that's not the worst. That's probably like the second best case scenario there. Alright, that's once. Oh my goodness, it's a burning dash. Oh my god, I think Moles is going to win 3 now. Well, I don't think anyone saw this coming. Wow, so many one-sided matches today. Oh wow, that was bad luck. Okay, that's twice. Hey! Finally the Yang Chungasaurus goes down. Yeah. And Yankee Ceratops will be awakened next. And he does have the type advantage over this spino, so. <laughs> Aster Asterion not going down without a fight. Although I sense it's gonna be a bonus point win for Morse. But wow, that Yang Chungasaurus did awesome. Yeah, look at that, almost a full tilt spino there. Can this Angiceratops survive to get to awaken mode? The answer to that is no. Well, that's mightily impressive by Moors there. Getting that bonus point win over Asterion there. Asterion, well... Y it didn't quite happen, unfortunately. Got quite unlucky, with, especially with the Decreosaurus. You know, if it got off the hit when it had the shockwave effect, it could have been a different match. But, you know, it happens. Just going to have to take that one on the chin. But, yep, yeah, that concludes round one. So, let's have a look at the table for Group I. Well, some quite one-sided matchups there, which I, I don't particularly like one-sided matchups. I find them quite boring, but, you know, can't do nothing about that, can we? So, yes, we have Moors and Marissa up top there with their bonus point wins. And then Dark Ash Star in third, getting a win over Zelos. And then we have these three buggers, which didn't quite happen for them. Were they? Well, honestly, the, the first matchup was one-sided as well. It's... I mean, Dark Ash, though, didn't fail to get the bonus point because of Deathfire. I mean, Zelos only got three hits off, which is, well, less than Cryo Nova got off. And I think probably about the same amount that Asterion got off. But yeah, one-sided matchups do suck. You know, it does suck sometimes. But again, it is where it is. You can't, you know, maybe you will get dominated one game. The next match, you'll dominate. But yes, could be some crucial matches coming up for these three in round two. As we will see, Marissa going up against Asterion. Zalos Ari's taking on Moors. And then, Dark Ashtar going up against Cryonova. So, well, round two could definitely shake this group up. Because all neither of these three are, are going to play each other. They're all going to play one of these three. So if these three can get wins, that would put this group back on level pecking. Like, against the, this matchup, I definitely fancy Zalos to win. I definitely fancy Zalos to get a win. But yeah, that's, that's going to conclude this session. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. And stay tuned for next time, where the fun starts with round two. And until then, this is Strange Gamer, signing out.